Hello everyone. We have another supply drop today. So I'm actually pretty excited about this one because the timing is great. I went on War Game Vault and saw that Tiny Battle Publishing released its Attack of the 50 Foot Colossi. So that's a new, new game if you go out there and you like to do print and play. That's available now. And just as I was sitting down, uh, this came in the mail. And I looked and that's what this is. So this is from Tiny Battle Publishing, Attack of the 50 Foot Colossi. So this is great. The game is available then in the two formats. You can either do the print and play or you can go ahead and order the full printed edition. So that's what we got here is another full bag uh, game with counters, cards, your map. So we'll take a look at the components. Another great thing is this is a solo game. Woohoo! So I'm very excited about solo game. I'm actually just really starting to enjoy kind of the uh, small footprint solo games. Uh, I just got done spending time playing Hindenburg's Hour. And so now to have another solo game come in is wonderful. So we're going to take a look at some of the components here. We've got cards which we'll open up. We have a counter sheet that we'll take a look at. And my daughter came in the room, so she's trying to be quiet. Her version of quiet is to jump all over and play. Let's see, we have a map. We have a player aid. I'm just pulling everything out of the plastic. And then, then we have the rule book. Let me just get everything prepared here. Great. All right, let's go ahead. Let's start with the rule book. So first of all, here's your cover art. Cities burning and stuff. If you can see, you've got you know people down below. Uh, this looks like 50s. So again, very fun and thematic type of you know that 50s element. So it's actually it's game number three in the Invader from Dimension X series. Galactic uh, Marines battle humongous rock aliens. And when we look at some of the counters, you'll see that uh, they carry over like it's the Marines. They have that unique image to them. So another game designed by Herman Lutman, who does great solo games. So what do we got here? Again, they're, they're uh, paper. It's, it's uh, actually this feels a little bit different. They have a different textured paper this time around than what I'm used to. It has a little more of a glossy feel to it. This is nice. Not quite magazine glossy, but this is pretty nice. Here we have, looks like a nice, pretty thorough table of contents, designer notes at the end. This is telling me about 18 pages. All right, so let's see what we have here. Pops right into your introduction. We got components, so we'll show the counters. We'll see the cards. What does this say? Tribe, tribe units. All right, so we'll check out what that is. Marine, looks, oh, that says a miner. So with a 50 foot monster, I wonder if this is some sort of like kaiju type of thing. With miners, all I can imagine is that somehow they've gone and awakened the monsters. Don't know yet, but that's what I'm thinking here. Uh, we're going to have to bring our own dice. That's fine. We got a few there. Draw. Draw a vent chit phase. Paralyzed. Marine recovery. Looks like all these tables here in the book. That's fine because that will explain what the table is. Plus, on the player aid, I just kind of glanced over, and it looks like that's all re reproduced over here. So you got the good explanations, counters blown up so you can see what they are, and, and it's good. This, again, uh, I really appreciate companies are starting to move towards a more relaxed rulebook system where instead of just dense three-column pages packed, you've got a more conversational two-column layout. It's easy to read. And here, the I don't know how the print and play will be for the print and play people, uh, they, but this has got kind of a, a nice earthy kind of brownish tone to the background. So if you were to print this in full color, I'm sure that would be maybe a little heavy on the ink. So I, I haven't seen the print and play files to know if maybe they just have a plain white background. But as far as reading, this isn't distracting. In fact, it really helps bring out the text and the images. Uh, I have seen some games that have a, a solid kind of dark background and that makes the text hard to read but this is actually still very easy to read and in fact being the color that it is 
I'm actually getting a little less eye strain and glare. So this is this is good. I can do this. I can read this. And the game seems pretty thorough, but we've got some good examples here. Just looking through more charts, probably examples. And again, just kind of flipping through here. We'll have to take time to actually sit down and read. Fantastic. More charts for you. All right, and then your designer notes there at the end. Okay, good. No, this is this is not a bad rule book whatsoever. Got a few things on the back. Again, tribe, uh, tribal boulder counters, tribal. So maybe that's what the creatures are. They belong to to tribe. So there's the rule book. That's a nice nice little rule book right there. Let's set that off to the side. Let's go ahead and look at the player eight chart. First thing we've got the event chit chart. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. There you go. That's a little close, but here's your event chit chart. Uh, but we got some things on here. So your events, acid rain, anti-gravity wave, rock garden of the gods. Uh, what does that say? Chain lightning two. Colossal rampage, a dust storm, a violet Pop Rocks, Trimmers, uh, Honoring Our Ancestors, Hurricane Winds, Medical Supply Drop, Gallstones, Gemstones, and Tectonic Eruption. Alright, very cool. Didn't read those, have no idea what they represent. But then we have here on this side the Mission Critical Cards and Table, or Charts and Tables. You got Mineral Recovery, Marine Combat Results, the Chiseler combat results, Scout Recon, okay, the Boring Bit combat results, nice, Adjacent Attack, uh, what is that, Bomber combat results, Landing Zone Procedure, and Jump Pack Move. And then a Headquarter orbital strike. Well, everybody needs a headquarter orbital strike. So there's some of the charts that you have. Let's take a look at the map. All right, everybody loves map. And again, it's a double-sided map. Nice. This actually doesn't have too bad in the way of artwork. Let's just zoom out just a little bit so you can see more of the map. Okay, so that zoomed in picture should have gave you a good idea. Uh, the artwork's not too bad. Everything's clear. The every single hex is got an identifier number. Uh, arrows pointing. I guess you can continue off that way. We'll figure. We'll figure it out here as we learn the rules. Uh, and then we have over here attack of the 50 foot colossi. Woo! Compass. Uh, map zone alpha. It's got your sequence of play. It has your terrain chart. Then your turn record and your phase steps. Great. Just a reminder of how you do things. Yeah, not bad at all. So that means with the small hexes, we got small counters. These should be one inch hexes. I need to keep like a little ruler here. Uh, mm, yeah, probably one inch. And then your 5 8 counters. We'll take a look at counters here real soon. And then here's map zone beta. So that's at least two scenarios, two ways to play here. So again, artwork's not too bad little spot where my imagination is that's where the miners have triggered some sort of portal that bring the colossal giants and then again your turn track information over here yeah no nope, not too bad as far as artwork goes so let's set the map aside let's take a look at counters yes one of my favorite aspects of a game let's just do them in again boop there we go. How about right about there? Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, you can see those really well. All right, so first we have over here, can't read those upside down. There's redstone. You're going to have some yellowstone creatures, some more yellowstone, graystone. Uh, so I'm really sensing a rock theme. <laughs> so I guess the creatures that we're bringing up because we're mining them are probably rock related, giant rock creatures there there's some gravel uh, so there's there's your your colossies right uh, so I guess instead of just pulling up aliens you're gonna pull up these giant rock creatures then we have just some like status markers stunned you've got an ore carrier 
here's your miners. Then we also have here, then you're going to get your HQ unit. So that starts bringing in the soldiers. And of course, these now, to me, are kind of iconic. Like, I see those and that was the first thing I thought was, oh, this is another, you know, invaders from kind of thing. So there they are. Uh, then we have here a bomber. We gotta have a bomber. And then we got the boring machine. As in, oh, you know, boring. Okay, so when I first th saw the word boring, my first thought was, oh, this is dull. Like, this is the dull combat results table. <sighs> no, it's the boring machine. As in drilling machine. Okay, good. I got it. Thanks. That's nice. Successful recon, game turn. So again, down here, then just a bunch of event markers. So actually, uh, what is it, 88? I always seem to forget. So you've got 88 counters. And they actually, I mean, they're good for the size. they got their information, jump pack movement data. I mean, so they're not terrible to read whatsoever. Now I'm going to zoom back out because, oh, that's in. Let's zoom back out. Uh, one of the things that sometimes gets me in, in smaller footprint games is the counters sometimes like to get not completely cut so they stick a little bit. So what I'm going to do, my one of my favorite things, let's pop some counters. Alright, so just be careful. Some of these then are going to require just a little bit of care. Yeah. I would rather that you were aware, that way when you're pulling your counters, you know, and, and you're usually careful anyway, but just kind of, you know, uh, be aware they might get stuck in a couple spots. So I'm just going to pull from a couple areas and see what we have. Oh, overall, overall this isn't too bad. These aren't stuck very bad at all. Usually it's the ones in my mind that get towards the center that start to have a little trouble. And so that's what I'm seeing here. A couple of these are just kind of stuck along the center line but they are coming out okay that's fine that's fine uh, but these ones near the edges are just popping right out yeah I'm just grabbing some alright that's the counter test now I'm gonna check one other thing uh, I also check for excess glue this is actually a pretty good batch here what I do is, is when I'm holding the counter and just kind of run my fingers, what I'm checking for is just to see if, if in that uh, pressing process where they put the, the paper, I don't even know how they make these. So in my mind, I'm imagining there's a machine that uh, has this paper laid out across this cardboard front and back and just kind of presses it together. And so you've got glue that holds things in place. And so sometimes I've, I've gotten some games uh, where the... Um, I already forgot the word, the glue kind of pushes out a little bit onto the edges and I'm happy to report that is not the case here, just a little bit sticky but this is actually very very little stick so overall yeah we're okay with the counters here I'm gonna be able to punch all these uh, where did I put my clipper oh there's my counter clipper over there uh, so what I do with these I clip them all And I know the big debate to clip or not to clip. So what we have is these then are cut in such a way that they, they're attached to the sprue by the edges, not the corners. And that's primarily why I started to clip these things is because you would get the tufts of cardboard on the edges and then they start to fray. So what I do, I'm just going to go ahead and do a couple here. So this will probably be one of those activities I do tonight. And this is why I clip them. It's very subtle. I mean, it's not like it makes a, a huge difference there. But I just kind of like the look. Because see, right here you got these nice, to me, kind of smooth edges. But this is what I'm trying to avoid over here is sometimes when you pull them off the sprue you get these corner tufts and then they start to fray so what I'm hoping is just to kind of alleviate some of that pressure on the counter so I clip I clip I admit it alright so counter clipping that's the assignment tonight 
Now we got the deck of cards. Nice. I'm always a fan of cards. Okay, well this one is, I got just a little bit of a, a tear in the plastic holding them. Oh, because it's, you know, the creature is ripping through the plastic, so it's kind of torn. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure that's not the intent, but uh, that's what it looks like. like. Yeah, these things are trying to bust out of the cards here. And for those who are curious about the card back, this isn't too bad. A lot of times when I am getting you know, going through a game and looking at it. I look at the card artwork and that kind of decides what type of card sleeve I'm going to get. So this, this isn't too bad. I, lately I just pretty much get clear sleeves, that way I can always see the card art. But depending on the game, if it's team-based games and I need to denote factions, then sometimes I'll get colored backgrounds. But uh, this I'll probably just go ahead and just, just clear sleeve. So what do the cards look like? Well, they're informational. So here we have a Colossi Order of Action. And then however these are, here's your Colossi Order of Action. So Tombstones, Graystones, Blackstones, Brownstones, Redstones, Tiebreaker. And it goes to the highest numbered hex. All right. Tombstones, Whitestones, Brownstones, Blackstones, Graystones. Tombstones, Graystones, Brownstones, Redstones, Yellowstones. Tombstones, white stones, yellow stones, red stones. Why is he? So, <laughs> my, my daughter, why are you saying that? Well, because this is, I guess this is kind of slightly randomizes who who goes what in, in what order. Tombstones look like they always go first. But then down below you have some randomization on who acts. So, that's, that's the cards. So there you go. These are going to be your order of activation cards along with at least one uh, yeah order of act Colossi order of action so the order in which they go and oh I guess the order in which you're going to activate tribes and then specifically which the sequence within that alright cool great so there's cards let's just take a look because you might be wondering then what is this all about now I thought I'd just share this last because if you're just curious about the parts and components, boom, covered. Now if you're curious a little bit more about the game, well let's just take a look and see what this is all about. I'll leave the flavor text for you to read. This says, from the fabulous minds of Herman Lutman and Colby uh, Dwerk, Dwerk, I hope, Dirk, Dwerk, Attack of the 50 Foot Colossi is the much awaited follow up to Invaders from Dimension X and Space Vermin, Vermin from Beyond. Set in the same universe, Colossi provides players with ore carriers full of solo fun and excitement. So we have the 58 fearsome unit counters. Uh, so it's 88 total counters, like I thought. The two otherworldly maps, so it's one map, but it's double-sided. You get one two-sided player aid card. The, yeah, I looked at both sides. Uh, the color rulebook. And then one atmospherically sealed Ziploc bag. Well... I wouldn't say atmospherically sealed. We've got the uh, <laughs> like hole and stuff. Anyway, it, it is a bag. But then it says we need a dice and our own pickaxe. So what is this about? That That's who made this, okay? So here's the story. Welcome back to the world beyond. The world of Graviton Prime to be exact. Miners on the volatile remote planet have sent a distress call out into space in the hopes that someone, anyone, would hear, arguing with my daughter, would hear their plea before it was too late. You aren't just anyone. You are the battle-hardened 124th Galactic Marine Raider Battalion, and you were supposed to be enjoying some R&R &R after crushing your last battle. However, never fully at rest, you were assigned the supposedly breezy mission of patrolling a peaceful region of space until your comm system buzzed to life with that cry for help. Great. And there you have Attack of the 50-Foot Colossi. That's the latest game from Tiny Battle Publishing. That's your components. And go ahead, check this out. Remember, you do have the option to get the printed version, or if you go to War Game Vault, you can also get the uh, digital files in case you are like a print and player and you want to put something together for yourself. 
Thank you very much. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave that in the comments. We will get back to you. Otherwise, enjoy your game, and we'll see you at the next Supply Drop.